Hi, this is my TOK essay breakdown series for May 2024. In these videos, I'll be unpacking the key terms and ideas from the title, as well as looking at the question through the lens of two areas of knowledge. For a much more detailed analysis, examples, and ideas for how to approach this title using the different AOKs and other TOK concepts, you can check out the full written guide link in the description. Okay, for this video, we'll be looking at title six, which is are we too quick to assume that the most recent evidence is inevitably the strongest? And you have to use the natural sciences and one other AOK okay for this question. Let's begin with some key terms. For this particular title, there are quite a few different words and phrases that you can unpack, but we'll start with assume, which we can define as to take something for granted, kind of implying a starting point for a belief or standpoint. Um, you can also pick out the phrase most recent evidence, so the latest facts, data or information that has been presented or discovered. And in a TOK context, uh, this is kind of referring to information that is used to support a claim or argument. And finally, we'll also pick out strongest. So in the context of evidence or argument, this might refer to the most compelling, persuasive, or credible piece of evidence. And it kind of suggests uh, superiority in terms of validity and relevance or impact compared to previously gathered evidence. Right, and some points or themes you might consider when answering this question. Firstly, it would be good to discuss how biases like recency bias might impact our acceptance of new evidence over older evidence older, more established evidence, that is. And also approaching this question more through the lens of shared knowledge, you might want to consider how societal values or trends might cause us to gravitate towards more, more novel findings. And finally, you can also think about whether advancements in technology necessarily make more recent evidence more accurate or simply more abundant. Right, and moving into the AOKs, we'll begin with the compulsory one, which, as I said before, is the natural sciences. And we'll start by stating that scientists are usually very careful to accumulate lots of evidence and thoroughly test their theories before drawing any concrete conclusions. So here we're putting the AOK in the general context of the title, as well as avoiding giving an overly simplistic answer to the question because you kind of want to avoid giving the impression that you think that scientists just immediately jump at the most recent evidence and throw any contradictory previous evidence out the window. Moreover, take into account how the title uses the word we, so this could be taken to mean that it's not only referring to scientists and experts from other AOKs, but rather the general public as well. For the claim, we can focus on the knowledge framework element of methods and tools and state that it is fair to assume the most recent evidence is the strongest because more advanced techniques usually provide more comprehensive results. And for our real life example here, we can look at the study of metabolomics and more specifically the technique of targeted, sorry, untargeted, metabolomics, which allows for the detection and qualification, quantification of a large number of metabolites in a single sample without prior knowledge of their identity. And this can be contrasted with the less recent technique of targeted metabolomics, which only focuses on a specific set of metabolites and does require prior knowledge of their identity. Now for the counterclaim, we'll focus more on the knowledge framework element of perspectives and for this one we'll say that yes we can be too quick to assume that the latest evidence is inevitably the best because the initial hype surrounding such evidence can make it look strong when in reality it's scant, weak or inconsistent and I mean we could see examples of these in uh, health related headlines in particular so around kind of 2020, 2021, there were various headlines suggesting that vitamin D supplements could treat or prevent COVID-19. Um, so, you know, whilst studies 
have showed a link between vitamin D deficiency and severe COVID outcomes. Randomized trials failed to show that these supplements provided any benefits to individuals with a sufficient level of vitamin D. And bring these ideas together in a mini conclusion, we can say that if the evidence in question is part of a comprehensive study that makes use of advanced techniques, it is fair to assume that the most recent findings are the strongest, but we should be more cautious with findings that have been gathered as part of a more limited study. Right, moving into the second AOK, -okay, I have chosen history here. We can begin by saying that this particular area of knowledge is characterised by the ongoing discovery of evidence which shapes our view of the past. And such evidence has the potential to offer valuable insight into historical events and perhaps even dramatically contradict what we thought we knew about them. Which leads us into our claim. Again, we'll talk about methods and tools here and state that recent historical evidence often hasn't been through the same degree of validation and scrutiny as more established sets of evidence. And an example we can use here is the discovery of the so-called Hitler Diaries in the 1980s. Um, and this caused many members of the public and even historians to be excited by such a groundbreaking discovery. But the initial verification methods used on these documents were insufficient, to say the least. And of course, these diaries turned out to be fake. And for the counterclaim, however, we can say that actually more recent historical evidence, given that it is collected and thoroughly scrutinized using advanced methods. So, for example, those seen in digital history, like 3D modeling and big data analysis, um, it's not unreasonable to assume that this evidence is more superior to that which is gathered using more traditional methods. And a concrete example we can use here is Andrew J. Toggett's Texas Slavery Project, which is a digital history project that makes use of a massive database of historical geospatial information and tax records. Once again, bringing our ideas together in the mini conclusion, we can say that whilst it's not unreasonable to assume that the most recent historical evidence is inevitably the strongest, given that it's often gathered using the most advanced technology, we need to be wary of evidence which contradicts established narratives. Well, I hope you found that somewhat useful. If you did, consider leaving a like. And for essay guides and personal feedback, feel free to check out my website, tokelifeline.com. Many thanks for watching.